so in this presentation, I'll talk about uh, TTS Tensor, which is a language and a compilation framework uh, to map tensor computations onto spatial uh, hardware. So this work was done as a collaboration between Cornell University, Intel Parallel Computing Labs, Georgia Tech, and Tsinghua University. So tensor computations are everywhere, from data analytics, like graphs and social interactions, to machine learning, like CNN and recommender systems, and scientific computing, like finite element methods. Due to this widespread use of tensor computations, there has been a lot of push to deploy these tensor applications onto different spatial architectures, like FPGAs, CGRAs, and ASICs. Microsoft Brainwave and Google TPU is, are a few examples of that. However, there still exists a gap on how to map these tensor computations on different spatial architectures. Now, using a simple driving example of matrix multiplication, which is also known as GEM, um, I will show why spatial programming for performance is hard. So here I'm showing a high-performance GEM systolic array uh, for FPGA. Uh, so, it, uh, so this particular design takes two matrices, A and B, uh, multiplies them together to produce the output matrix C. Um, the boxes shown in blue uh, implement the actual compute P's which are computing the dot products. Uh, the boxes, initially the matrices A and B are stored in the device memory. The boxes shown in orange and green implement the set of P's which read these matrices A and B from the device memory and feed them to the core systolic array for the computation. The boxes shown in red collect the results from the core systolic array and then write them back to the device memory. Now if we look closer into this design, we can find that it consists of compute customizations in the form of data vectorization where the reads of matrices A and B are vectorized and the writes to matrix C are also vectorized. We can also find that there is a loop unrolling in the form of 2D array of compute P's. We can also find communication customization in the form of data gathering. For example, the CDRainer P's are impl uh, implement a gather network to collect the data. We can also find data forwarding within a single row of the compute P's, which forward the, uh, the data of A matrix uh, in, in the horizontal direction. And we also have data scattering within the feeder P's uh, in order to distribute the data among themselves. And finally, we have memory customizations in the form of rotating registers in the compute piece and double buffers in the feeder and the, in the feeder piece. So now if we look at uh, the code, the HLS code for this high performance gem systolic array, it, it consists of around 750 lines of code. And if we zoom into a small portion of this code, we can find that it consists of compute customizations like loop unrolling, loop tiling data vectorization, and memory customizations in the form of buffers. This also has com uh, communication customizations in the form of data forwarding. So uh, from this, we can see that uh, in a high performance uh, design uh, from HLS, the hardware customizations and algorithm are kind of <coughs> entangled with each other, which makes these designs less portable, less maintainable, and less productive. So as we already saw in HLS-based uh, high-performance designs, different bits and pieces of the algorithms are kind of entangled with the com uh, compute customizations, memory customizations, and the communication customizations. So in order to solve this problem, we, uh, we uh, implement T2S, uh, which takes the approach where it decouples the algorithm from different types of hardware customizations. So, uh, the way T2S does this is uh, T2S allows the programmers to, impl uh, to specify the algorithm in the form of a temporal definition, which is typically a functional representation of the algorithm. And the different hardware customizations are uh, rep represented or specified by the programmer as a set of spatial mapping directives. Thus, by taking a temporal definition and spatial mapping directives, T2S is able to convert a temporal program into a spatial hardware uh, and hence the name T2S. So now let's see uh, how T2S can generate the high performance gem systolic array that we have showed before. So to start with, the user or the programmer has to specify the uh, algorithm in the form of a temporal definition. 
So for example, here the, uh, the user is specifying, uh, is declaring an output function C, and they are specifying that each element of this output function C has to be initialized with the value of zero. And each element Cij of this output matrix has to be computed as a dot product of the ith row of A matrix and the jth column of B matrix. Now since uh, the application size could be bigger than the actual hardware uh, available, the user is trying to tile the loops i, j, and k uh, into i, i, j, j, and k, k loops. So with this, uh, we will get a very simple six-dimensional loop nest, uh, iterating over i, j, k, i, i, j, j, and k, k. And the innermost loop body is uh, computing the dot products uh, in order to perform the matrix multiplication. Note that in the innermost loop body, we are using the i prime, j prime variables, which are basically using the i and uh, i and ii variables to compute the uh, effective address. <coughs> so once the temporal definition is specified, uh, T2S will map the entire computation onto a single hardware P. Now the user can go ahead and optimize this temporal uh, program uh, for a spatial architecture. So for example, in this case, the user identifies that the innermost loop body consists of four major operations. Loading of matrix A, loading of matrix B, performing a MAC operation, and storing the results back into the C matrix uh, at the appropriate location. Uh, so uh, the user isolates the loading of matrix A into a separate function called A feeder using our isolate producer director. So this creates another function A feeder, which consists of exactly the same loop nest as we had in the C compute uh, function. However, uh, however, this A feeder just uh, does nothing but just load the values of the A matrix and send them using the channel CH1 to the, to the main compute PC. Uh, the WCH primitive here stands for the right channel operation. So now, uh, after the isolation of A feeder, the user can unroll the IA and JJ loops in the C compute P, and this will create a 2D array of the compute P's. Now, uh, since uh, previously A feeder was supplying the data to uh, C compute P using a single channel CH1, and since we have unrolled the CPs, we also replicate the channel CH1 into a 2D array of uh, channels, uh, which is shown here uh, as a 2D array. Uh, now the user can go ahead and optimize the A feeder function uh, further. For example, here the user further isolates the uh, the loading of the matrix A from A feeder into a separate function uh, called A loader. And similarly, uh, now A loader and A feeder are connected using the channel CH2, uh, and A loader is actually loading the uh, values of the matrix. Now the user identifies that. Uh, the, the, uh, the um, loading of matrix A in A loader does not really depend on the loop variable JJ. And hence, they can remove the loop JJ from the A loader. And this will reduce the number of DRAM axes from the main memory and should improve the performance. <coughs> but now, because we have already uh, removed a loop in the A loader, and A loader and A feeder had a producer-consumer relationship, Removing a loop in the uh, producer but not in the consumer actually breaks this data flow relationship. Hence, in order to recover this data flow relationship, the user inserts a buffer in A feeder at the appropriate loop location. In this particular case, this loop location is uh, II. And now A loader and A feeder uh, are connected using channel CH2, and A loader sends the data of matrix A using CH2 to A feeder. A feeder reads the channel and writes the values to the buffer. And further, it uses the values from the buffer to feed the uh, systolic array of the main compute piece. Um, now the user can also specify the forwarding directive, which will, uh, which will create a forwarding network within the same row of the C, uh, uh, C compute piece, which is also known as the systolic communication. Uh, user can uh, unroll the A feeder piece uh, and then create a scatter network using uh, our scatter directive. And the user can further uh, isolate uh, C drainers and C collectors from the main compute PC and use our gather directive to implement a 2D gather network. 
Now, with these optimizations performed on A matrices and A matrix and B matrix, and few other optimizations, we get this 20 lines of code as compared to 750 lines of HLS code that we had saw, uh, seen before. And as we can see, it consists of um, first of all temporal definition. Then it has compute customizations in the form of loop tiling, compute partitioning, data vectorization, and loop unrolling. And it also has memory customizations in the form of loop removals and buffer insertions. Finally, we have communication customizations in the form of data forwarding, data scattering, and data gathering. So with these 20 lines of code, we can generate the exactly same hardware that we had shown before. Now let's talk about the T2S compilation flow. So for, in T2S, the, the user or the programmer has to first provide a T2S specification. This uh, T2S specification or T2S code is then compiled by the T2S compiler into extended Halide IR. For the host part, T2S generates an LLVM code, which is then compiled into a binary and run on the host CPU. For the FPGA, currently, we, uh, currently T2S uh, generates OpenCL HLS code, which is then compiled by Intel Altera AOC <laughs> compiler and run on Intel FPGAs. And finally, for CGRA, uh, T2S generates CGRA assembly, which is then processed by CGRA compiler and mapped and routed on to the CGRA, and further simulated by our CGRA simulator. Now let's talk about the evaluation results. So we compare our GEM uh, implementation with the open source uh, ND range style OpenCL code, uh, which serves as the baseline. And we also compare our design with a handwritten and manually optimized design from industry, uh, which is a Ninja implementation. And these are the results. So as we can see, baseline design uh, uses 70 lines of code, uh, while T2S uses only uh, 20 lines of code, which are 3.5x less number of lines. And Ninja implementation uses 750 lines of code. In terms of DSP, the baseline implementation utilizes only 68% of the DSPs, while T2S and Ninja implementation both use 84% of the DSPs, which is a pretty high DSP usage. And finally, in terms of throughput, baseline implementation uh, achieves a throughput of 311 gigaflops, while T2S achieves three, uh, 549 gigaflops, and Ninja implementation achieves 626 gigaflops. So, uh, Thus, uh, with T2S achieves 1.8x speed up over the baseline with just 3.5x uh, lines of code. And it achieves 82% uh, performance of the Ninja implementation with just 3% of uh, lines of code. Uh, so you, using this language and compilation framework, we implement some other tensor decomposition kernels like MTTKRP, TTM, and TTMC on both CGRA and FPGA. So here are the results for the CGRA. As we can see, um, for all the four benchmarks, uh, GEM, MTTKRP, TTM, and TTMC, the FMA usage, uh, uh, FMA usage of all the designs is very close to 100%. And all of these designs achieve a performance which is uh, close to 100% of the Ninja GEM implementation. For the FPJ side, uh, we can see that MTTKRP achieves a throughput of 700 gigaflops. TTM achieves a throughput of 562 gigaflops, and T2, uh, TTMC achieves a throughput of 738 gigaflops. And the DSP utilization of these uh, benchmarks is also high. For example, in case of MTTKRP, it is around 80%. For TTM and TTMC, it is more than 90%. Thus, with almost uh, close to 100% FMA usage, T2S is able to achieve 100 per, uh, close to 100% throughput of the Ninja Gem implementation for CGRAs. And with 80 to 90% DSP utilization, it achieves 560 to 740 gigaflops for FPGAs. And finally, to conclude, T2S provides a concise yet expressive programming abstraction that decouples spatial mapping for, from temporal definition. It identifies the, keys, uh, the set of key compiler optimizations, which are essential for creating high-performance spatial hardware for tensor kernels. And finally, we demonstrated high performance for um, four different uh, tensor kernels on both FPG and CGRAs. So thank you uh, for listening, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Do you have any questions? Any questions for the audience? No? 
Yes, one question. Uh, okay. Microphone, uh, right back there. Hi, uh, I have a question about your baseline uh, gem kernels. So that's the one that we can download from the OpenCL design example, right? Yes, so this is the uh, this is the one that you can download from the Intel website. It's a, it's a, yeah. Uh, for that kernel, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering what is, I remember it is a, uh, it is a blocking uh, implementation of gem, right? And uh, do, you, do you remember the block size of that, for that baseline? Uh, it's, I guess, 64? Oh, what I'll have to check. 64, right? Yeah, okay. and vector length was around 8. But I can recheck that. Oh uh, yeah, because I I, I recall that uh, actually Intel also provides a proprietary gem uh, kernels. Proprietary? Is it open source? It's not open source, but I think it can reach about one one t one t flops. Uh, so so I'm not sure if you are aware of that. Uh, on which FPGA? On a real ten. I think they, they they have some slides previously a few years ago. I forgot which conferences, but uh, okay. they, they they mentioned about their proprietary GM kernels. I think I think I can check that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>